Hello, Matu Jimen, you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime Time. Now, headlines. Surrendered militant organization of Dima Hassau district of Assam, Dimasa National Liberation Army has once again appealed to the central government to keep their promises which was made during the signing of the peace accords. The death toll from the powerful earthquake that struck Morocco on Friday has risen to 632 with 329 injured according to Moroccan state media. Telugu Desam Party National President and former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Chandra Babu Naidu has been arrested on Saturday by State CID Police in connection with an alleged rupees 550 crore skill development scam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared the African Union as a permanent member of the G20 at the inaugural session of the two-day summit in New Delhi on Saturday. Confederation of Nagaland Chamber of Commerce and Industry, CNCCI, will be hosting the first Northeastern State Chamber of Commerce and Industry business conclave from September 18 to 20 at Niatu Resort to Mukedima. This was informed by the CNCCI Chairman Dr. K. Kuha Muru while addressing the media here in Dimapur today, September 9. Dr. Muru said that the event will create opportunities for startups, entrepreneurs, and focus on the untapped business prospects in Northeast. The three day business conclave will see participants from all the Northeastern states, chambers of commerce. The Confederation of uh, Nagaland Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we are uh, organizing one conclave. This conclave is one of its kind, first in the Northeast, where the real stakeholders from all the eight states of Northeast will be participating in this uh, conclave. We have named it as a first Northeastern States Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry business conclave. It's going to be a three-day event with uh, Honorable, Honorable Chief Minister uh, of uh, Nagaland, Sri Nifirio, who will be gracing the function as the president of the event. And we have also sent across a few invitations to other states' chief ministers. And we have got a very good positive uh, uh, feedback from them. We are also having some academicians who will be well-known well academicians from uh, Northeast who will be speaking on the various issues. We are also having former, former diplomats who have served in uh, various capacities in uh, various parts of uh, India, especially uh, in Southeast Asia who is expert in uh, uh, the Actis and Lucas policy. So we have, a, uh, and of course we have a closing ceremony which will be again uh, graced by our advisor to CM, Sri Abu Mehta, who is also the chairman of uh, AIDEN, Invest Investment Development Authority of Nagaland. Uh, here I want to also say that it's going to be a three-day event with the integral function on uh, 18th. 19th will be a full whole day a business session where all the eight states, states will be discussed seeing various issues that co we have co uh, uh, concern in common. So 19th we are going to have a whole day session. 20th will be the day when we will be coming up together with certain platform uh, that will try to uh, work out action plan that we will be working out in first two days to be put into action. So and then uh, we will conclude the uh, conclave with uh, the closing ceremony. So these are a few things uh, 
It is first of its kind in the initiative. The state body chambers are not just by designation and name. It is not just by nomenclature, but we are, this time this is the first of its kind meeting where every state that will be representing this meeting is, are the stakeholders of their respective states. Surrendered militant organization of Dimahasa district of Assam, Dimahasa. National Liberation Army has once again appealed to the central government to keep their promises which was made during the signing of the peace accords. Addressing the press in their designated camps in Maibang, DNLA leader said that many militant groups have laid down their arms for peace and signed peace accords in the past but promises made were not fulfilled. He said relief and rehabilitation of the surrendered militants should be done at the earliest and bring them back to the main stream. On the issue of bifurcation raised by indigenous peoples form, DNLA strongly objected to the idea and appealed both the state and the central government not to bifurcate the district for Dimasas and non-Dimasas, rather diversify the district with all communities living peacefully together. फाइव इयर्स के अंदर में हम लोग का पीस एग्रीमेंट को इम्प्लीमेंट करेगा बोल के वादा दिया था और वादा को तोड़ना नहीं चाहिए नहीं तो कोई हम लोग का जाति बोलो कोई कोई भी मतलब सरकार के ऊपर भरोसा नहीं रहेगा सरकार का ऊपर अगर भरोसा नहीं रहेगा तो देश किसे शांति आएगा और ये भी हम कहना चाहता हूँ कि देश को बरकरार रखने के लिए मिल के काम करने के लिए हम लोग का जो जिस एक और में हम लोग का जो एग्रीमेंट में है रिहेबिटेशन ये सब हम लोग का सरकार इम्पोर्टेंट लेना है जितना केसेस है हम लोग का खिदार खिदार्स लोगों का ये केस जल्द से जल्द एक अपील कराना चाहिए एक अपील होने के बाद हम लोग का सब का भी खिदार्स जो जो का केस है सब इस शांति होगा पब्लिक के साथ सरकार के साथ मिल के काम करने सकेगा हम लोग का हाथ टैंक को फ्री छोड़ो तब तो मिल के काम करना चाहेगा ये हमारा रिक्वेस्ट है और और एक मैसेज देना चाहता हूँ कि थोड़ा सा आई पी का बारे में कुछ दिन पहले भी एक मैसेज आया था न्यूज़ निकला था पहले भी हुआ था ऐसा जैसा उनका ऊपर जो भी डिस्कस करना है पाइफारिकेशन तो सुनने में भी कैसे लगता सब भी मालूम है हाँ डिस्ट्रिक्ट दि, दि, क्रेशन होना है बाराना है उसको डिवाइड नहीं करना है तो उसको बाइफरकेशन अगर डिवाइड करने से सीधा पता चलता कि उसमें कॉमनियल केस का चांसेस है इसलिए सरकार को हम यही दरकार से कि हम आ, ये हम लोग दिमाशाओं के लोगों के साथ इस तरह खेल नहीं खेलना चाहिए हम लोग अभी दौर है मुनीपुर में क्या हो रहा है सेम यहाँ भी होने का चांसेस है इसलिए सरकार दिमाशा नहीं मार खुकी नाका नहीं जितना ट्राइब है दिमाशाओं का दिमाशाओं में सब का अच्छा के लिए मिल के कैसे रहेगा उसका हिसाब से डिस्ट्रिक्ट गठन at least 632 people were killed in a massive earthquake that hit Morocco on late September 8. The number of injured increased from just above 150 earlier to 329, said media reported on Saturday, citing an updated initial casualty toll from the Interior Ministry. Several buildings and historic landmarks in the major cities were damaged and numerous others were toppled in the powerful earthquake, which according to Morocco's Geophysical Center struck in the Ikil area of the High Atlas with a magnitude of 7.2. The U.S. Geological Survey read the quake's magnitude at 6.8 on Richter scale and said it was at a relatively shallow depth of 18.5 kilometers.
هز ارضيه في مراكز Interior Ministry urged people to stay calm, stating in its televised statement that the earthquake had hit the province of Al Haus, Kwarzare, Margaret, Azilal, and Darudan. The residents of Margaret, the major city nearest to the epicenter, said that the earthquake felled some buildings in the old city, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A local television aired pictures of a fallen mosque with debris spread on crush cars. According to a local official, most deaths were reported in the mountainous areas that were hard, hard to reach out to. Meanwhile, leaders from across the globe expressed grief over the tragic loss of lives in the earthquake. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that India is ready to offer all possible assistance to the North African country. He also offered condolences to those who have lost their loved ones and wish the injured a speedy recovery. Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared the African Union as a permanent member of the G20 at the inaugural session of the two-day summit in New Delhi. This announcement marked the AU's accession as a new member of the prominent global organization consisting of 55 nations. Shortly after the announcement, Union of Comores, President of AU Chairperson Azali Asumani, took the seat as a full member of the G20. PM Modi said in keeping with the sentiment of the Sapka Saad, India has proposed that African Union should be given permanent membership of the G20. In addition to the recent addition, the G20 is made up of Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States and the European Union. साथ की भावना से ही भारत ने प्रस्ताव रखा था कि अफ्रीकन यूनियन को G20 की स्थाई सदस्यता दी जाए मेरा विश्वास है कि इस प्रस्ताव पर हम सबकी सहमति है आप सबकी सहमति से आगे की कार्यवाही शुरू करने से पहले मैं अफ्रीकन यूनियन के अध्यक्ष को G20 के स्थाई सदस्य के रूप में अपना स्थान ग्रहण करने के लिए आमंत्रित करता हूं टेक शॉर्ट ब्रेक के वॉच Dangor breaking news I know for those who make decisions that count for those who lead from here to be better and we should all go for the development of the students in the state have fought for the protection of culture shanti ke sath Welcome back. Moving further, Telugu Desam Party National President and former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Chandra Babu Naidu, has been arrested on Saturday by the state CID police in connection with an alleged rupees 
550 crore skill development scam. Naidu has been charged under sections for criminal conspiracy, cheating and dishonesty, inducing delivery of property. CID additional DGP and Sanjay said Naidu possess exclusive knowledge of the transactions leading to the issuance of government orders and memorandum of understanding, making him a central figure in the investigation. He possesses exclusive knowledge of the transactions leading to the issuing of government orders <coughs> and memorandum of understanding, time to time, uh, which makes him the central figure of this investigation. The ultimate use of the misappropriated funds, including cash holdings, with uh, certain individuals like Vikas Kanvilkar of Design Tech, requires further examination. Key documents related to the case have gone missing as other primary suspects. The investigation is focusing on locating the misappropriated funds, making the custodial interrogation of Sri Narajanra Naidu very much necessary. He being in a very important position as head of the political party and also having occupied the office of the chief minister. There is every chance of him investigating, the, uh, uh, influencing the course of investigation. Therefore, therefore, the necessity of taking him into custody. The material including statements of public officials recorded under section 164 CRPC clearly points to the involvement of uh, uh, Sri Naidu as the principal decision maker to release the money in advance from government. The charges in this case carry penalty of more than 10 years of imprisonment and given this uh, deep-rooted conspiracy, the custodial interrogation is deemed necessary to uncover all aspects of the financial Amid speculation of likely alliance with the PJP, former Karnataka Chief Minister and JD as leader, HD Kumara Swami said on Saturday that till now there has been no discussion on seat sharing or on anything. Former Chief Minister and PJP leader B.S. Yadiyurappa has said that the day before the alliance with JDS for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections will strengthen the PJP in the state and that talks are on it in New Delhi in this regard. To this, Kumara Swami said that was Yedi Europa's personal reaction. He also said people need it because Congress is looting the state and people need alternatives. Yedi Europa yesterday's reaction is, is actually his personal reaction. Up till now, there is no discussion about seed sharing or anything. Cardially we have met two, three times. Later on, let us see what will going to happen. Sir, this uh, time is there. The Congress leaders continuously saying two desperate parties who can't uh, face the people, they are going together to fight against us. This kind of statement. We are coming together, the, the discussion, plenary discussion, why it is going on? To go before the people only, this discussion is going on. People need it. Because of two, three months, BJ Congress misdeeds, looting the state. People required alternative. People are watching all the development. I know this issue, what our media friends projected from two, three days, how Congress friends internally already, they are shaking now about future political development. As far as JDS is concerned, how do you manage your cadre, sir? Because many of your cadre... There is no problem, brother. I joined and with BJP in 2006. Six. My goodwill. Why goodwill actually created? Because of the 20 months my administration, entire state, they appreciated about my administration. 
In the wake of controversy erupting over the change of India's name, UN Secretary General Chief Spokesperson Stefan Turajik told a news channel that the UN will change India's name to Bharat in UN records when New Delhi completes all the formalities. Turajik also said it is not for the UN to comment on a debate. It is a bureaucratic issue when it comes to what the UN needs to do. India, however, will not be the first country if at all the name change happens. The comments come even as the opposition has accused the centre of planning to drop India and stay with just Bharat as the country's name. The country's name tag at the G20 table of Prime Minister Modi was written as Bharat. Amid the debate on renaming the country, the bar attack at Prime Minister Narendra Modi's table caught much attention. He was making his opening remark at the G20 summit on Saturday. Earlier, a dinner invite to President Dropati Murmu mentioned President of Bharat, which triggered speculations that the PJP-led NDA government at the centre intends to rename the country's official name. Reference to Bharat were made, including in documents relating to Modi's recent visits abroad, including Indonesia, this week. Assam Chief Minister Imanta Biswasarma said that the state government has officially decided to ask the centre to completely withdraw AFSPA from the state, however said that will abide by the decision of the central government. Eight districts of the Assam are currently under AFSPA. Earlier this week, Assam CM met the Union Home Minister Amit Shah on the issue. It may be mentioned that the withdrawal of the act was one of the promises made by the Saffron Party. Assam government has today officially uh, decided to request central government to withdraw Armed Forces Special Power Act completely from the state of Assam. However, we will abide by the decision of the central government, more particularly Home Ministry, because it is uh, after all central government will assess the situation. However, so far state government is concerned, we have decided to recommend complete withdrawal of Absa. The Chief Minister also proposed to introduce political symbol in the Zila Parishad and Atalik Panchayat elections, but no party symbols for candidates contesting GP elections. He said the Cabinet has approved amendment of certain provisions of Assam Panchayat Act 1994. These will include indirect election for post of President of Gaung Panchayat, new GP. President will be elected from the 10 GP members. We have decided to amend our Panchayat Act whereby the, on the three tire consignera system, the bottom is Gao consignera. On the Gao consignera, the election will be party-less election. The symbol, official symbol of the party will not be used. And the president will be selected out of the members. So there is no separate election for the post of president. President will be indirectly elected. In Jila Parishad and Ansolik Pansai, party symbol can be used. In Jila Parishad, anti-defection law will come. If anybody wants to defect that political party from where he or she will win, it will require 50% of the total strength of that party. Also, we have decided that in all the three tiers, no confidence motion will be brought, only two times, twice out of five years, once at the end of two and a half years, <coughs> and next one, in between two and a half years to five years. A historical decision has been taken that the Jila Parishad account will be now henceforth, will be audited by the CAG, Compiler and, Compiler and Auditor General of India. We have also decided to create uh, 79 subdivision, public subdistrict in the state of Assam, which will be co-terminus to the newly created Legislative Assembly constituency. This is the biggest administrative reform that has ever been taken in the state of Assam. The, all these new subdivision will come into effect from 17th September. All these subdivisions will be officially created on 17 September. 
On 17 September, three districts which we have uh, earlier abolished will be restored will, with new boundary. Vishana district will be restored, DC will be appointed, Ojai will be re uh, notified with a different boundary as well as Tamilpur district. So far as Bajali district is concerned, we will take few more days as some discussion is going on between the people of Bajali and Borpeta district or people of various localities of Borpeta. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Humble TV. Good night. Dango breaking news. I know. So, those who make decisions that count, so 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 those the world is moving fast and you're always rushing to catch up. Let Hornbill TV catch up for you. We are all about news that matters, more importantly, news that matters to you. Hornbill TV bra latest reports our conversation to Anibo, Sop Nagaland states laga, our Bahar states laga bhi. Hornbill TV do abni ge dunia laga usor Anibo. All together on a single platform. Think big, watch big. Fresh news, fresh day. We are Hornbill TV. Cultural sustainability is an important issue that often gets overlooked. It refers to the idea of preserving and sustaining traditional cultures in the face of globalization and modernization. Sustainable tourism, alternatively, promises not only to support economic development in destinations, but also to facilitate cultural and environmental conservation in heritage sites around the world. Tourism has not always been the most sustainable endeavor. Some forms of tourism have even led to culturally and environmentally abusive and exploitative practices from polluting to poaching. The World Tourism Organization defines sustainable tourism